All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego, extremely sunny heatwave San Diego, actually. And today I am delighted to be joined by Justin Bozak, who is on the Jersey Shore on the far the far side of the country. How are you doing, Justin? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah. Absolutely. And Justin is an owner partner at Remax Revolution, the Jersey Shore in New Jersey. And what we're going to talk about is a very interesting subject is um, using training systems and people to reinvent the way real estate broker brokerages are run. Um, so let's face it, uh, you know, Justin, um, real estate brokerages, they kind of have been run a very kind of traditional, very the same, like wherever you go, it's pretty much the same way they operate. Um, so why is it that you think now that they, they need to innovate? Yeah, I think you see a lot of companies obviously have uh, come in and uh, they're taking market share in one way or the other. You know, the most corporate of companies, your Zillow, your Realtor.com, they're not even in the business of uh, doing the transactions of real estate. They're in the business of selling you uh, referrals. You know, mm -hmm. so our goal as an agency is to try to get ahead of that, try to teach our agents how to get their own referrals and get their own business cut out the middleman. Right. And, uh, and so if they're going to, if they're going to be more, um, if you like self-sufficient and as you say, cut out the middleman, what are some of the things that they need to do that perhaps other brokerages are relying on these outside sources for? Yeah, I think you need to treat this more as a, uh, as a job, you know, than, than a hobby, you know, for a lot of agents, uh, they, they don't look at this as running their own business. Uh, most agents are running around and their business is running them. Uh, you have to look at this as many, you know, look at this many different ways. Um, if you're looking to you do this as a long term business and uh, not be out of business within a year or two, what like we see uh, a lot of agents in this industry. And uh, it comes down to just, you know, working, you know, the hours, putting in the hours, nine to five, hopefully being in the office, being in an environment uh, where you can learn. And, uh, you know, also work with some uh, some other agents that hopefully can teach you, you know, some some things that maybe you don't know. I've been in the business for almost 20 years and uh, there's things I'm still learning. And uh, there's an energy uh, and, and a vibe, I believe, that comes uh, from working with agents in your office that are also doing uh, high levels of business. And there's business to be had in the office. And, uh, you know, that's kind of our uh, main thing that we're pushing to, to help the culture of our office and. You know, we've got 11 staff in the office, which we believe is really the key uh, yeah. to making this work. Yeah, because it's interesting what you just mentioned there, because let's face it, a lot of people jumped into the real estate um, market over the every time there's a real estate boom. Let's face it, a lot of people think, oh, real estate, that's easy. I'm going to jump in, get my license and, and, and jump in. And obviously the market becomes very crowded. Um, and then we have a turn in the market and obviously uh, these people start to struggle. So what are some of the things like when, when, when the market is maybe a little bit more challenging, what are, what are the things that a realtor like you is doing that perhaps a lot of others aren't? So with the market being challenging or not, I'm always spending the money on marketing and advertising. I know a lot of agents feel that, uh, in a, in a good market, it's easy to sell a house. You don't need to spend as much money. Uh, to market and advertise. And I feel like this is the time to maybe even double down and spend more uh, because the attraction, you know, when you put out a nice mail or a nice, um, you know, photography, video, things like that um, will only attract you to other sellers, you know, which happens time after time after time again, you know, and I was just conversing with one of my agents yesterday about this and, you know, he had asked, why are you spending, you know, cause he asked me how much money it costs $1,500 on a listing that, you know, you could sell without having all that stuff. And I said, mm -hmm. it's not about that one deal. It's about the next one. Um, and I told him the story about how, you know, the person around the block saw the presentation, called me um, and so on and so forth. I, you know, I, I've gotten multiple listings, you know, and that's the key to this game today is, is the listing side of the business. Multiple listings by spending the big money that I didn't necessarily have to. Yeah, so that's so that's a very interesting point there. So really investing in making in showing every seller, every house that you're listing, showing every seller that you're putting 100% into it, because yeah, 
um, you know, we've been, and we can kind of still are, but in a very hot market around here. And uh, I guarantee you, there's a lot of like realtors who aren't doing what you're doing because they're thinking, oh, house is going to, uh, it's only going to be on the market for a day or two. But to your point is you're not just selling the house. You're also showcasing your work to everybody in the neighborhood as to how you approach selling a house. Correct. You nailed it. Um, so, you know, part of the, part of the package that I do is, uh, you know, video. So I'm on camera. Uh, we do a minute to a minute 30 video, uh, and that goes on like social media too, as well. So, you know, I've had clients where they said, Oh, a friend of mine is saw my house on TikTok. I didn't even know you put it there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, that will, will that lead to the actual sale of the house? It may not, but listen, it's a conversation that, that that's now being had by a client and somebody else that saw their property, uh, that they know of. You know, so now it's visibility, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. more people that see your stuff, the more conversations that are had, it increases your chances. So instead of me uh, doing what I did back in the day, making a ton of phone calls to try to find clients, now clients are finding me. They actually cold call me now to, to work right. with me. I haven't cold called in, in probably seven or eight years now. So. Yeah, which is interesting because I keep getting text messages from realtors I've never heard of around here asking me if I'm, uh, especially over the last year or so, asking me if I'm interested in selling my house, like unsolicited, unsolicited texts, which I always kind of find interesting because am I really going to sort of go, oh, yes, here, text back to, to something completely anonymous, somebody I've never heard of and say, oh, yeah, suddenly I, am, I think I want to sell my house. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're more likely to react to like a nice mailer piece that you drop or, you know, a social media piece, video, something that's going to really say, ooh, like if I'm going to sell my house, like that's who, that's how I want my house presented or that's who I want to work with. And being on camera, I think is important because they can see uh, you only have really, you know, that one opportunity of that listing appointment to really impress somebody. And sometimes it's not long enough. You know, it's only an right. hour. It could go one way. You know, if you always... Uh, a lot of times you walk out and you feel like, ah, you know, I could have said this or I could have said that. I feel that the video that you do and the Instagram and the Facebook and everything mm -hmm. that you research um, just helps build who you are so that they are more comfortable with you. And uh, even if you think that, hey, we didn't cover this or do that, there's something that's that's there out there that they can research and see. And if, you know, that's the difference between you and another agent that doesn't really have a social media uh, presence. Mm -hmm that could be enough just to get you that listing. Yeah, because obviously like the personal branding part of it is is very important, you know, as well as obviously the corporate branding, but the personal branding of it, because at the end of the day, you know, we want to work with people who we like and trust and, and we think have got, uh, or we believe have got our back in this situation. So your, your personal, if you have a, if you have a large presence or if I can go and research you really quickly and find you everywhere and see that you're a, uh, you know that you the, obviously you've been doing it for a long time but you're very knowledgeable and all of that um this gives me a level of confidence and so uh how, how much work do you with your colleagues you do on or do you do talk about how to build a, a very solid personal brand so i'm actually putting together a training course right now with um our social media um representative and uh, it's going to be like a, a six-month course for our agents and uh, so we're going to be spending a lot of time, I guess, is the is the answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kind of what I what I do and put out there, um, you know, I'm doing it. I'm trialing it to show the agency that, you know, this is how we can put it together. I'm working out packages and deals uh, with videographers and figuring out the formula of how to shoot it, how many seconds, you know, how to do the intro and outro just to make it easy. Um, so that's part of, I guess, you know, building an agency is I'm, I'm doing a lot of things to really pass down to the to the agents because I can only do so many deals. Um, I'm mm -hmm. busy kind of building this. We went from 20 agents five years ago to, a, to 150 agents, um, you know, and really kind of catching steam right right during COVID uh, when I guess most agencies were, were uh, not recruiting and, sure. and retaining. Um, we were able to double in size those, uh, those two years through COVID. So uh, a lot of it was just the foundational stuff that we do as a, as a company to try to take the pressure off of the agents, um, transaction coordinators. We've got a sign guy. We've got a drone and Matterport guy all in house to reduce uh, fees and costs. The social media thing was always available, but now uh, we're training the agents um, technically, like how they can start doing it 
um, on their own um, to make it more effective and understand it and be on camera. So we're always looking to uh, to push things and uh, we see where the future is going and uh, we continue to build things and add things on to the to the agency to to make the agents lives easier so they can go and just do more volume do what they're best at you know which is usually negotiating deals and meeting with clients face to face yeah because let's face it i mean having the more time you have with your with your clients and obviously prospective buyers that's where the real value is so being able to create more time for them for high value activities and i think that's a that's a critical piece that uh as you mentioned, they're trying to more, you know, more efficient, trying to, you know, get make sure the technology is the right technology, training people so that they know how to use it. All of these things can obviously help create more time to do the, the higher value activities. Absolutely. Yep. And then it's the system then behind it where you, you go out and get the lead, you know, you've got to get it into your CRM. You've got to have drip campaigns. You also have to have mailers, you know, maybe you do build, you're doing billboards and, there's different levels and layers to it, and they all work together. You know, I think where a lot of agents um, kind of give up is is when they see things not working. Maybe after three to six months, and you know, real estate it's a long term game. Even when you're working with a client, I always look at it. It's a it's a long term relationship. You should treat your marketing and advertising um, the same way. Yeah, absolutely. And then, what about what what kind of changes of approach do you do when the market when a market kind of turns like it is now? I mean, what are some of the things that that you do to ensure that you weather this? Well, you don't just weather it, but as you said during COVID, that you continue to be successful. So yeah, it's just doing more than everybody else is doing, whatever that may be in your market. You know, so I know when we were doing professional photos and drone and night shots and videos and stuff, this was like going back to 2012. So we've been doing it for 10 years and nobody was doing it. And I talked to some agents and uh, they're in markets where nobody's still doing it. So mm -hmm. it really depends on what market you're in. Uh, but you have to really look at the leaders in that market and then just creatively think and say, like, how can I make my systems better? How can I make the processes better? Um, and maybe adding people, you know, so sometimes it's adding a buyer agent uh, to your team or hiring an assistant, which I think is a, a big move when you get to, you know, 40 or 50 transactions and you find yourself having trouble managing everything or, you know, you've got that leaky bucket where, you know, things are falling through. Um, people is a big part of the process. And, uh, you know, that's something where if I grow to 20 staff, I think that's cool because we've done things that are a la carte within the office. Uh, marketing and stuff like that, where you're not mandated to do it, but it's a great mm -hmm. option. It's right at your fingertips. You just push a button and, and it's literally done. Um, you know, we're building an app uh, for the office as well to kind of have the agents, if they get uh, have an issue, maybe uh, they need help with a showing or something like that. You know, you push a button and, you know, one of the agents will step in and, and help you out for 40 or 50 bucks. Um, so as an agency, we're, it's all about just creating solutions. Um, as an agent, if you're an agent listening to this, what are the solutions in your market? You know, obviously I don't know your market or your area, but I bet if I sat down with you and talked to you about what's happening in your area, who's the lead agent in that area, researching that lead agent and what they're doing, uh, focusing maybe on some marketing areas that are not maybe being hit by that agent, but are surrounding that, uh, you know, area that you're looking to get into. Um, it could be, Hey, uh, I have a lot of agents that wanted to get into luxury or sitting down with them and saying, Hey, focus on these areas that are not being tended to because mm -hmm. the price range is less, but your odds of converting there are better because there's less presence there. You can go in and just set up shop and then just, you know, go do deals there, start there, and then you can build some areas around that area. So it's, it's really comes down to, you know, how much are you taking time to sit down and look at your business and where is it coming from? Is it referrals? Is it from open houses? Like, where are you successful? Mm -hmm. Is it from cold calling? find out where your success is and double down on it and then cut out the 25 percent of the stuff that really holds you back from doing more of what you're the best at and each agent has a different answer yeah no that's a, that's a, that's interesting yeah I'm, I'm sure and and i think obviously now as you get a change in the market that should um obviously probably shake out uh you know some agents who perhaps aren't this isn't the, this isn't the right business for them or don't have the appetite to do the things that you're you're talking about but the interesting thing that you mentioned there is you know maybe it's a time to invest uh which is obviously to a lot of people it's counterintuitive like oh why would i invest in a downturn but the fact is you're gonna have to 
work harder. You're going to have to, you know, convince people that you're the right one because now they're going like you, everybody can show like, oh yeah, two years ago I sold a bunch of houses or last year I sold a bunch of houses, but um, nobody's going to believe that track record now that the market has changed. Correct. And listen, I'm I'm still out there uh, as an agent. Um, I'm one of the uh, producing partners, you know, in the company. I've got two mm -hmm. business partners, which which definitely helps. Um, I like doing it just because it keeps me fresh. I can, you know, get fresh eyes on things. I can try new things. I can innovate within the in, uh, industry for our area. Um, so that's cool. But um, yeah, I think uh, at the at the end of the day, it really comes down to really spending time looking at the business around you, what's happening, where's the market going, and uh, you know, do that yearly. You know, figure out again what can you cut out. 25% because really the one thing you can't change is time in the day. I tell mm -hmm. all my agents this, you know, the one thing you can change is what you do in that time during the day. So each year, year over year over year, you know, I used to, I was cutting out different things. So it was like creating rules. I'm not going to work with buyers under 300. Then it was 400. Right. Then it was 500. Then it was a million. Now no more buyers. Same thing with listings, no listings under three, under five. So create these rules for yourself, you know, and, and turn it into a habit. Um, if you want to get productive and efficient, you know, maybe don't answer your phone every five minutes. Anytime anybody calls, you know, only answer when it's a, a number that comes up that you have programmed into your phone. Uh, and then, you know, follow up with your phone calls in an hour or two. Blast out your emails and, and do what you have to do. Focus. Um, a lot of agents are kind of sporadic. They're all over the place. Um, they're not focused on, on their business and they're not efficient with their time. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point there. The the point about focus, because uh, you know that's the thing that derails not just realtors but anybody is if you don't have the proper focus. But what I like about also what you said there is setting yourself rules all the time because, and and that's going to really stand to you because if you are kind of scattered and you're spread very thin like this is it's going to be really hard for you now because you're going to be it's it, you're going to be probably scattering yourself even further thinking that that's the solution in, in a tougher market is to go even broader than i'm going already yeah absolutely and listen it just it works you know i've trusted that um i kind of just came up with it because i'm like i need to change something how do i give myself a raise and the way you give yourself a raise is go over uh, go after the higher dollar valued you know clients and or you know free up your time by focusing on listings you know, because I can manage 20 to 25 listings at the same time, but I can't do 20 to 25 buyers at the same time. The mm -hmm. price point is the same. How, you know, how do you think that's going to turn out in the end, especially if you're a listing expert? And then also you step into, um, you know, where I'm running uh, an office partner, an office, running a team, dealing with marketing, dealing with social media, doing all these other things during my day. You know, and I hear agents complaining all the time that uh, they don't know what to do with all their time. They've got, you know, five <laughs> deals under contract. And I'm like... <laughs> That's hilarious. To me, it's yeah. just like you just you're not using your time wisely because I've got 25 deals under contract and I'm running a company and, you know, running a team like to me. It's just how efficient are you being with your time and who are the people in, in the processes that are around you that are helping you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. And and I think this is the point now, Justin, is like when the when we get into a transitional market, it's like when the it's that, that old adage, isn't it? When the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked and if you're not if you're not efficient if you haven't done all of these things then it's going to be a tough market uh, for you to uh, operate in um so what's one last tip J uh, justin that you would give to um real estate brokers and brokerages across the country maybe uh, now is the time for them to try what one thing to try one thing would be to uh, ingrain yourself in listening to podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much content out there. I spent pretty much uh, the light bulb went off 2016 podcasts. I didn't know they were a thing <laughs> and they were for quite some time. And I really, every time I was in the car, listening to podcasts and when I was at work, headphones on, listening to the podcast as I'm working, so many ideas are out there and they're already tried and true. You have agents, there's agents that are amazingly better than me. Uh, that'll do 10x the business that I'll do that you can actually learn from. They will tell you their secrets. It's all in these different podcasts. So find some different ones that you like. You like the host um, or just Google some different guests. Google who the top agents are, you know, in your area or outside your area. Find somebody that you kind of align with. And once you do that, 
you know, you can be like, I can kind of, you know, vibe with that guy. I can, I can do what that guy's doing because he kind of feels, and you know, he does what I would do in the situations. And then all of a sudden you're just learning and, and it's, it, it happens very quickly. And it's like, you have a free coach. Yeah, no, that's a great piece of advice. Uh, I mean, you know, learn from people who do it, learn from people who are successful, learn from people who are willing to share their 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 um, experiences and their secrets, as you say, and because I think that's a, everything you've talked about today, Justin, has all been about, you know, education, learning, you know, uh, efficiency, productivities, all the things that, uh, you know, that good good companies should do, regardless of whether they're real estate brokerage or or whatever. So all of Justin's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Justin, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Sure. So uh, I have a uh, agency with 150 agents. Um, we have two offices, one in Wall, New Jersey, the other, the other in Spring Lake. And uh, we did, uh, how much did we do last year? 330 million as a team. Um, wow. Did uh, 515 million as an office. Uh, we're going to break that this year. Um, we're on track to do uh, 630 uh, million dollars in sales. And wow. um, our average transactions are high. We do our average agents doing 12 deals, and they're making over 110,000, which in New Jersey is pretty good. Probably not in California. That's probably not great. Um, <laughs> our average price points around 500,000. So you right. have to get context. But um, yeah, I feel like we're just getting started. Uh, you know, we are literally reinvesting back in. You know, the money that we're making, we're reinvesting back in the staff and the company to continue to grow it. I'm not worried about, you know, the the fancy cars or the fancy houses or boats or anything like that because I don't have time for that stuff. I want 10 years to have the option where I can retire. Not that I'm going to, but, you know, it's an option. <laughs> yeah, listen, fantastic. Well, listen, best of luck, uh, Justin. This has been great. Thank you for sharing your insights. Thank you all for watching, listening, and I will see you all again soon.